<laughs> uh, good old Marine Corps Caden says, what's crack a lackin' everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Tapala, with my fellow Marine Corps brother, Anthony Miranda here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement Cadillac Escalade, grabbing a stogie, and uh, get some, and uh, we're both wearing versions of red, you know, to, uh, to give love to our military service members currently deployed overseas. That's what red stands for, R-E-D. Remember, everyone deployed. You know, in honor and respect to our time deployed, and honor and respect to us being in a uniform, we want to drop. We want to drop a video here because we're just talking about how many military service members, Air Force, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, are so fit for entrepreneurship, but yet they don't follow the path of entrepreneurship. And uh, we're just having that discussion, and it's amazing how much people just don't know about business. People don't know about entrepreneurship. And yet, people want to live their best life. What time is it? Their best life right now. But yet, they're not applying themselves. So, a little little backdrop on this stuff, man. So, you know, you, you've been you know out now for some time, and you, you spent time in the Marine Corps. Miranda, tell everybody, man, your MOS in the Marines, what your what your job was. Yeah. So I was a 0331 machine gunner. So basically, I shot machine guns, right? 240, 50 cal, Mark 19 grenade launcher. And I was a section leader. So really in charge of three different squads and I'm helping employ those squads to, you know, support our element, whatever the element was. So yeah, four years active duty. That's one of the best times of my life. First times of my life. <laughs> so it's fun. Where are you from in a neighborhood growing up? Humble Park. At Chicago, for those of you that's Chicago, not from Illinois. Chicago, that's Chicago, that's the inner city, Chicago. Right, so you were raised around a lot of wealthy people. Never seen. You're the first wealthy person I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in other words, he was raised in the hood. Everybody, you're out now. You get, you 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 spend some time in the Marine Corps. Now you're out. We found you selling insurance for. Uh, I'll just leave the company name out. Let's just say they have a nice goose, right? <laughs> Black. But uh, um, yeah. we found you in, in that area. But you know, Miranda. You know, uh, uh, the conversations we would have with other military veterans. Especially on a day like today. Remember, everyone deployed. Red Friday. All these guys are always talking about what they're going to do when they get back home. When I get back home, I'm going to do this. When I get back home, I'm going to do that. When I get home, when I get out of uniform, I get to enjoy my freedom again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. So let's talk about some of the excuses that military service members make about why they cannot consider, even consider, the world of business. Matter of fact, let's just start off with this. Let's, let's, uh, some of those names. What are some of those names we were talking about earlier? Let me give you some names, guys. Let me give you some names. Glenn Bell. Okay, Glenn Bell, which is which he yeah, started. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. What's another name? Mike Illich. Mike Illich. Little Caesars. Pizza Pizza. Tom Monahan. Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza. By the way, these are food items that Marines generally eat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Taco Bell, Little Caesars, yep. and Domino's. Breakfast of Champions. Breakfast of Champions. Pre Breakfast of Devil Dogs. What else? What are some other got, names? Uh, Bob Parsons, Go Daddy. Mm, Bob Parsons, Go Daddy. Okay. Fred Smith, FedEx. Fred Smith, founder of FedEx. Okay. Robert Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Best-selling author, personal finance book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. How many guys have read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Cash Flow Quadrant, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. How many guys listen to uh, Rich Dad's podcast? How many guys saw our video, our CEO, Patrick Bet David, interviewing Robert Kiyosaki four years ago during the entrepreneurship tour? What else? Do, any other names? Uh, Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Okay. For all these names we just mentioned, rattle them off real quick. All these names we mentioned, check out the common denominator, common denominator with all these names. Glenn Bell, Mike Illich, Tom Monahan, Bob Parsons, Fred Smith. Robert Kiyosaki and Drew Carey. What do you think the common denominator with all those names are? I'll give you guys a few seconds here to respond in the comment section. The common denominator between all those names that Anthony Miranda just read, founder of GoDaddy, founder of Taco Bell, founder of Little Caesars, founder of Domino's Pizza, the host of Current Price is Right. The combinator with all these men, that's correct, Richard Washington Jr., Common denominators, yes, they are all veterans, and more specifically, they're all former Marines. Right. All, we're active, formerly active duty Marines. Once a Marine, always a Marine, but you, you can be formerly active. They were formerly active duty Marines. So, which lends us to believe that there's a certain generation that was wired after leaving the service, leaving for the business world. 
Miranda, I know we're building we're building a company. We're hiring talent, we're recruiting uh, 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 sales folks, distribution outlets, recruiting uh, insurance companies. What is the biggest excuses that you've heard from the veteran military community about why they cannot start a business? Uh, one is, I just want to go to school and use my GI Bill. Mm. I just want to go to school and use my GI Bill. Currently today, I remember when I, I, I got uh, the, uh, got out, I was a single dad because of my kids. I was on a GI Bill. I was uh, going to school and using that money not only to pay for school, but also my lifestyle. But today, post 9-11 GI Bill in the city of Chicago where we're at, what does a veteran get from the GI Bill to go back to school? $2,000. 2000 bucks. By the way, which is kind of cool because when I was going through, it was like 800 bucks, it's $2,000 now. So in other words, if you're going to school full time, the post 9-11 GI Bill pays a veteran two, two grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Respectful. So if, if you're not married, you're not kids, two grand might let you get away. By the way, 2,000 bucks, Miranda, in the city of Chicago, <laughs> even if you are single, does $2,000 go a long way? Not at all. Not at all. Gas, parking, like it's, oh my, the city's ridiculous. They're taxing everything, you know? So. You run a red light here in the city of Chicago, it's 150 bucks, yep. 200 bucks. The reality is, yes, you can get out of the military, take advantage of your veteran benefits, but the question you gotta ask yourself is, how far does $2,000 last you? I mean, not everybody lives in Omaha, Nebraska, not everybody lives in McAllen, Texas, which is considered the most affordable city in the United States of America. People live in New York, people live in California, people live in Florida, people live in Texas. Especially if you have some kids, you can't expect to support yourself, let alone a family, on post 9-11 GI Bill, $2,000 a month money. What's some of the most, more uh, wealthier cities that they pay more GI Bill? Any? I think the, the highest is San Francisco, mm -hmm. and it's like 4500 But Man. you gotta think about cost of living. Oh. Like it's, it's still the same thing. You're not making anything. So before, before we uh, went on this drive, we did call one of my Marine Corps buddies from 20 years ago, and he's a cop now which is another point we'll get here in a second. He's a cop. He said he tried to be a cop in in, in Palo Alto. And uh, what were they paying him as a cop in Palo Alto? Making $120,000 a year. It's not bad, right? Sounds good. $120,000, $130,000 a year. What did he say right after that? He said he was barely scratching, like getting past the poverty line. Like barely. Still living paycheck to paycheck. And you think $120,000 a year. Most people, you're like, oh, you're good. That's set, right? But it depends on where you're living. When you factor in inflation, yep. it's going to continue to go up. Not in Palo Alto, not in Silicon Valley. He says, I'm just above the poverty line. Guys, in in Alameda, in the, in the, in the Bay Area, there's nine counties out there. Low income is considered 117000 a year. The reason why I know is we have an office out there. We've established an office out there. Why? Because there's a glaring need for what we do. What we do. So, number one, GI Bill. Sure, you can get it, but you can't live off it. That's another excuse why. Uh, veterans say they can't start a business or shouldn't start a business. Either want to stay in or get back in, do their full time just because they're working for that pension, that retirement. That's the whole goal. They want that retirement. So they want to try to do their 20. Yeah. And get their, their pension benefits. Okay. Yeah. Number one, in this in this modern military, in this day of modern military, you hope to stay in your MOS for 20 years. Assume they don't try to downsize the military and kick people out. Okay. But assuming that you can stay in the military, assuming they can allow you to stay in the military, and then the risk that you put yourself is this, deployment, deployment. You want to do your 20, get ready to deploy. And uh, being deployed twice, it was never fun being deployed. And there's a lot, by the way, there's a lot more other veterans that deployed a whole lot more than I have. I did it twice, okay? I didn't like it. I was a father, but my, my heart was uh, ripped every time I uh, deployed. Uh, the first time I deployed, no kids. Second time, forget about it. The, all the mini deployments, all the workups, to get you prepared for deployment, that sucks. So to, 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 to say, you know, you want to do your 20 years, you, you got to be able to suck up uh, 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 being deployed all the time. The second part about that is you hope to make your 20 years. Hopefully your MOS doesn't downsize or you're not forced to laterally move and hopefully they, they have a spot for you in those, those uh, slots too, especially the higher rank that you come up in, in the military. Uh, number three, I mean, nobody's really living on a military paycheck. You're making a living, but you're not really living. You're paying for your basic lifestyle. Nobody's getting wealthy. So assuming that you want to be wealthy, assuming that you want to live life, live your best life, getting ahead in a military paycheck alone isn't making you a lot of money. And then what Miranda just said, if you want to wait to your 20 years, guys, your 50% your, your retirement is based on your basic pay. Your basic pay. 
not with your BAH, not with your comrades, not with all those other things. It's your basic pay. So let's say you're making $6,000 a year. Basic pay, a sergeant major, something like that. E9, master gunner sergeant, 3,000 bucks. You are living a life at 40 years old with three grand. Well, Matt, you know, this three grand, I don't have to work for the rest of my life. I know, I know. However, with that being said, I got out after eight years. I got out after eight years. By the way, I'm just one of very many success stories in the veteran community. There's many people that got out at 14 years, many people got out at 16 years. But I got out at eight years, was able to build myself to a seven figure income. Initially, I was able to build a six figure income after three years leaving the military because there's another life out there. You know what I tell myself? We fought for this freedom. We might as well enjoy it. We're, we're fighting for uh, American pie and old glory and all that stuff. I might as well enjoy some of that glory. I might as well eat some of the apple pie and some of the best places that America has to offer. So yeah, really consider, man, 20 years? You know, I know you're only gonna be like 38 or 40s, early 40s, but then imagine how much more you can have done. I still, I still got guys that I serve with still in the Marine Corps, 30 years in now, right? And here's the biggest fear they have. Man, I gotta start all over again. So you're starting your life all over again, hopefully avoiding some debt with three grand a month, at best four grand a month. That's another reason why uh, military uh, service give us an excuse why they can't start a business, which is basically initial excuse. And the reason why we're doing this video is let these people know, they're just basic excuses. You just haven't been expanded. You just been, hadn't had your vision expanded yet. That's not the reason why. They want something, something safe and stable. Something really stable. Like a job. Right. Like, like, what are some of the jobs that uh, military service members talk about all the time? Cop, firefighter, people's gas, anything like working for the city. Ut utility company. Right. Yeah, working for the city. Defense contractor. Yeah. I'll, I'll be deployed again. Right. This time I have 200 grand a year. No taxes. Okay. Again, you're a defense contractor. How are those defense contractor uh, 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 all over the world? We all know about what happened in Syria and Benghazi. There's a whole, it was with 13 hours. Uh, there's a there's a movie named after that you're putting yourself in harm's way with guys that you didn't serve with or train with that you hopefully they know their job even if you are a cop firefighter which by the way are all honorable professions all honorable positions but if you want to live life travel the world have have some money tucked away for retirement not worry about your kids uh, uh getting into massive amounts of student loan debt you're not gonna get ahead in a stable job man and you hope that your job is stable now have you heard of this thing called cutbacks have you heard of this thing about automation and robots replacing positions have you heard about have you heard about this thing called this boss paying you the least for the most amount of, most amount of productivity you can get from you there's no such thing as a safe secure stable job here's why you can't say there's a such thing as a safe secure stable flow of bills but there's never really a safe secure amount of stable income unless you create your own economy here's the bottom line gents ladies and gents he or she that controls your income controls your lifestyle and the decisions you make in that lifestyle. So who would you rather bet on? You bet on you or you bet on somebody else to tell you what you're worth, what neighborhood you should live in, when you should take your vacation. The reason why I'm sharing and we're doing this video is because we realize that the veteran community has just not been exposed to a bigger conversation about what life is really all about and what you can embrace in your life. By the way, I served, I got in 2003, okay? I got in 2000, when did you get out? There's a 14-year uh, gap here between he and I, but here's the, here's, the, here's the funny thing. The problems are still the same. Even though there's the 14 year gap between when he got out the Marine Corps and I got out the Marine Corps, the problems are still there. I have not faced somebody said, man, I'm glad I got a safe, secure job. I'm really living my life. I got hundreds of thousands of dollars saved up for retirement. I'm not dependent on anybody but myself. By the way, those are very few examples. But if you want more of a common example, man, trust your own hands, trust your own mind, trust your own decisions. What's another excuse? This one frustrates me. They'll say, oh man, you know, I'm just, I just want to skate, bro. I just want to chill. You know, it's too much work. I just want to skate. So you spent your whole time in, in Marine Corps, in your, your, your branch of military service. You sucked it up. You've dealt with discipline, dealt with order, dealt with having to follow through. You dealt with having to come through missions. You had to deal with all this riffraff, right? And now you just want to duck down, stay isolated in a corner and not deal with people. Let me give it to you straight. If you want to live the rest of your life, guess what you have to deal with for the rest of your life? You. And don't have to deal with you. You got to deal with the rest of everybody in society. Now, I'm not saying you agree with everybody, but you still got to do you. You still got to live your life. If you have a family, you have kids, you still got to serve your, your spouse. You still got to raise your kids. You still got to go out there and make something of yourself. You still got to be an example to your community. You sticking yourself in a corner in isolation is not going to serve anybody. More importantly, it's not going to serve you.
So why would you serve yourself? And, and guess what happens when you're stuck in a corner? You're just chilling, you're skating. You know what piles up? Stack of bills. And, and then what happens, you look on social media, you see videos like this, you see all, all these people living their life and you're not. Why? Because you decided to stick yourself in a corner. Here's what I, and by the way, I, I, I dealt with PTSD coming out and a lot of those uh, temperament and anger issues. I remember I had, I had this uh, certificate in my, in my office. I was throwing some paperwork away and uh, it was this pink certificate. And I read it and I was, show, I was showing she and I said, babe, listen, this is my PTSD counseling. And I shredded it. I shredded it because I'm not going to limit myself to a PTSD or whatever case. I am in control of my mind and my decisions. And I know these conditions are real. I'm not trying to desensitize or, or, or minimize it. These conditions are real. Here's what I found. I got nowhere and the other Marines and service members get nowhere by sticking themselves in a corner and doing nothing, skating and chilling. What you will do is you're gonna find the next best version of you if you have enough courage. As much as you had courage to put on that uniform, you're gonna have courage to serve yourself, serve your family, serve your community by going out there and getting involved. And guess what happens you get involved? The mission continues, brothers. The mission continues, sisters. The mission continues on. It doesn't, the mission doesn't stop when you take the uniform off. The mission still continues long after you've worn the uniform. Another excuse. Sales isn't for me. Sale, sales and entrepreneurship isn't for you. I just want to shoot guns and, you know, do, <laughs> sales isn't for me. You know, it's funny. Speaking of Benghazi, Tonto, our CEO, interviewed Tonto on our Valuetainment channel. And Tonto today is teaching weaponry skills, combat skills, carbon concealed uh, training skills to people all over the country. So he's taking his military experience, packaged it up into a business, and he's teaching people how to effectively and safely handle weapons. See, that's a business. So he used his conflict as an opportunity to not only use his name to put, it, put his brand out there, but he uses that position to also create a business, to create a lifestyle, to travel the world, to go all over the place, uh, to be, imagine having somebody make a movie after you. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, what Peter Schreiber, Peter Schreiber played uh, Tanto, in the movie 13 hours so even he in one of the worst conflicts in the middle east that that was that obviously clinton and didn't have a reaction or answer for he created his conflict and created an opportunity he got served lemons but he made lemonade out of it life gave him chicken shit, but he made chicken salad out of it so listen man i i, I totally get it you're not in sales you're not an entrepreneurship but listen the people that understand sales people that understand listen where'd you where'd you where'd you go get a meal today what are some of the businesses that you love to go, that you and your wife like to hang out at, shop at, eat at, entertainment? Guess who started that? An entrepreneur. Guess what an entrepreneur did? He had to sell you why you need to come to his restaurant. They need to sell you why you need to come to his place to entertain yourself, to have a drink, to have a meal, to spend some money, enjoy yourself. Guess who started all that? Somebody that was in entrepreneurship and somebody that's in sales. So the things that you love and care about, the things that you follow, guess what? Those people are in sales. And those people are already in entrepreneurship. Here's the thing too. You naturally sell already. Just by you wearing the uniform you serve in our country, you're already selling. You're selling the, the value of what it means to be in uniform. You're selling the value of what it means to serve. You're selling the value of what it means to be a citizen, an effective citizen that fought for this country and defend, defended this land. You're selling by your actions. So people think that, 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 that people get involved in sales. And factoid tip, 46% of people that, that never thought they'd get involved in sales are happy they got involved in sales, right? People that make the most money, 53% of people making 100, uh, 100 grand a year are in sales management, consider that fact. So there's so many things that's involved in our community today. It's not just the, the person that, that, that sells you one thing, uh, you lose and they win. If it's an effective business, if it's an effective product, it's a win-win scenario. You just gotta, you just gotta find your win-win scenario. So any other any other thoughts? Any other any other ideas after that? So listen, I'm here with Anthony Miranda, machine gunner. I'm personally coaching him, I'm personally mentoring him. He's gonna be the next six-figure income earner. He's on his path. He's got the dreams and the desire to be a seven-figure earner, to be a co-owner of our agency. And all you gotta do then, as I wrap stuff up here, all you gotta do then is just find a community of like-minded thinkers and doers. They're willing to be more, they're willing to have more, and more importantly, are willing to do more. You find that, guess what starts happening to you? You introduce yourself to another life that you never knew existed. When I got involved in, in the insurance industry, when I got involved in, in entrepreneurship, it unlocked a whole world that I thought I only saw in mag that, that I knew I only saw in magazines. I never thought I'd be able to live that type of life. Well, guess what started to happen? I started traveling all, all over the world. It's funny, a few years ago, we went back to Dubai. The last time I was in Dubai, at least in, the, in this particular part of the country, this, uh, this particular city, was, right before the Persian Gulf War. 
staging, staging right before the Persian Gulf War, uh, uh, right before we went to Operation Restore Hope in Somalia, Africa. When, so we go back to Dubai, Dubai a few years ago. It's my wife's first international trip. And Dubai is this amazing metropolis. And I'm glad I went back. We rented a yacht. We, 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 went, uh, we went diving in the, uh, in the Persian Gulf. <laughs> it was, the, the water was 90 degrees. Unbelievable. Why? Because somebody had enough courage and had en had enough drive in helping me overcome my own situations, helping me overcome my own excuses, so therefore I can start living my best life. And that's what I want you to do. Jesse Moon just logged on to as well. Jesse Moon is a is a army veteran in our San Antonio office. He just logged on to as well. What's going on, Moon? We're all we're all happy for him, oh, yeah. right? And uh, run running his office there with his wife Cindy. Think about that. I'm, we're not the only military veterans uh, enjoying entrepreneurs. There's other Military service members experiencing the same type of success, uh, level of success, enjoyment. But I, I'd say this, entrepreneurship, it's not easy. It is simple. It's not easy. But it's, at the same time, it's so well worth it. Miranda, even right now, could you imagine yourself just getting a job? <laughs> Never again. No. Hell no. <laughs> I'm ruined. <laughs> He's messed up. He's wrecked. Save me. Like, psychologically, yeah. psychologically, he can never take a paycheck from somebody else. Ever. Why? Tell, tell people why. Why, why, why is that? Why is that different for you? It's just it's fulfillment. It's like I know what it's like to to work all day for somebody else, and it's exhausting. You go home, you don't have energy to do anything else. I can work a, a 15, 16 hour day in this business for myself, and I still have so much energy because I know all my efforts are being put towards building something for myself. I own it; it's mine, and everything I do is going to put me in a better position for the future. It's not, I'm not just selling my life away. I'm not just, hey, here's an hour, give me 15 bucks. You know, it goes deeper. Like, it has exponential effects. So, yeah, I could never. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what, do you have pride, what do you have pride more in doing? Pride say, hey, telling your daughter, hey, baby, I got a safe, secure job. Or saying, baby, we're going to Hawaii because your father was able to do some things, make some moves. And me, me and you, baby, we're going to Hawaii. We're going to our, see our family back in Puerto Rico. We're about to go to Costa Rica. We're about to go to Bora Bora. We're about to go to all parts of the world. And me and you, baby, are going because daddy decided to make some moves as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. Which level example do you want to give your kids? Definitely the second. I don't want to have to be explaining to her that I can't make her practice or her game or whatever because I have work. Like I, I control my time. I, I have control of my life. So I can put time towards where it matters most. You know, so I wouldn't have that opportunity if I had a job. So listen, guys, as I, as I wrap up, I just want to encourage you, for, for those of you who are watching this, please share this with a military veteran service member. Encourage them to entrepreneurship. Encourage them to work for themselves. Encourage them to start a business. It doesn't necessarily be our business. Encourage them to start a business. Why? It is a risk that has its definite rewards, that has a price to it, and some of it is very priceless. And I want you guys to... <laughs> Jesse Moon says, for everybody watching, <laughs> if a couple Marines can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Can't even argue. Can't even argue. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, speaking of which, uh, we can still banter back and forth with the inter-service rivalries that we have. We continue, but at least this way, we have a lot more fun at it because we got some money in the bank. You, you, don't, you don't end up being stressed out about a lot of other things that normal veterans that don't take this challenge, they don't take this, they, they, they don't take this path. Experience. Now, I know it's probably subjective for me to say that. It's just been my observation. So, I, please, I'm entitled to my opinion based on the 20 years of me being an entrepreneur, talking to other military veteran service members. Guys, this path, it's not simple and it's not easy, but it is simple. How? If you want to experience some of these things, please share this uh, with a veteran that you know. But he, he, here's what I'd say three things. Number one, you gotta find a community to plug into. You can't do this by yourself. It's got, and it's gotta be more than just online. It's got to be more than just island. So plug yourself into a community of like-minded thinkers that want to that want to know more, they want to be more. More importantly, they're willing to do more. Number two, you got to find a proven mentor. You got to find someone that's willing to tell tell you. Like for example, Miranda, he know he knows how he knows how much I get paid. He knows where I'm, he knows where my money comes from. He knows how how we how we travel the world. There's no, it's, it's, we're exposing things. There's nothing to hide. You you want to find a proven mentor that's not only willing to teach you, but also willing to be in the grind, in the grind and was being in the trenches together with you. We were just making some phone calls earlier today. Uh, how, to, how to start building, we're starting to do some business development skills to build Anthony Miranda's uh, business. Number three, you gotta find a, a system that keeps you accountable. That's what we loved about the military. We had a system, we had things that kept us in order. 
So you want to find a system, a business system that keeps things in order. So therefore you have one, two, three steps in order, four, five, six in order, seven, eight, nine, et cetera, et cetera. And you know the steps. So therefore it's predictable. It's not like you're just shooting from the hip. Like he, he, he's a machine gunner. Even a machine gunner has a tripod. It's not Rambo. Now, before he got to become a machine gunner, did you ever think it was all that involved just shooting a machine gun? Oh, not at all. There's like, <laughs> like measure by degrees and mills. It's insane. And that's like shooting a machine gun. involved. Yeah. yeah. Intersecting fields of fire. Yeah. All those different things. It's very deep. Yep. Entrepreneurship is very deep too as well. And you need to find a system that not only teaches you, but also keeps you accountable. So with that being said, appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate you guys sharing this. Please tag a veteran, share with the veteran, encourage him to the world of business. And in the meantime, follow Anthony Miranda. Watch him as he climbs. Watch him oh, yeah. as he rises. Watch him. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna, he already knows this. I'm gonna give him all I got. But he's gotta do his part. Just like anybody watching this video, we'll give you all we got. Just like you expect your brothers and sisters to do, but you gotta do your part. If you're willing to do your part, as Anthony Miranda is willing to do his part, when when this synergy happens, lives change, starting with yours. So that being said, guys, happy Red Friday. We're thinking of all of those are deployed. And in honor of you, the reason why we're happy, because we are thankful for you to be on that wall. We're thankful for you deployed. We're thankful for you taking up arms and uh, 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 sacrificing time from your loved ones, your family members. And in honor of you, we're going to do the best what we got back here at home. We're going to hold it down, but you got to promise us something. When you come back, all the things that you talk about that you're going to do on deployment, you make sure you get it done. Reach out, send us a DM. We'd love to share your story. We'd love to talk to you, reach out to you, and get you on the good foot and uh, step off in the next phase of your life. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, smart continue to love smart, be money smart, smart today. <laughs>